All right, I'm giving my talk again in five minutes. All right. And For those of us who missed the longer version. Yes, exactly. For all of you people who suck and didn't come to my talk. Okay, we are programmers. We hate writing documentation, but we also hate reading bad documentation, so we don't want to be part of the problem. Um, and if you like to write documentation, talk to me, and I, the organization will pay you to help me. Um, we're not going to talk about this. Uh, so it's unreleased. Um, so, why do we hate writing documentation? Um, we release a module, we write a module, it's great, it's succinct, we write documentation for it that's beautiful, we release it, and it's a success, um, and then the user hit it. The users tell us that it sucks in many ways. So we do the right thing, we refactor it, we take this single module, we make it a class hierarchy, which now has documentation in many different places that most users or readers won't see. So, the documentation sucks. <coughs> So, we could cross-reference the documentation. You look in the place that you normally look, and uh, you tell them, look somewhere else. But this sucks, because now you can't get a feel for the whole thing, and you um, often don't know what you're looking for, because there's no index of, of what you can find. So, you can copy the documentation everywhere, but that's a lot of work. It's uh, more work than you want to do, and um, you wouldn't do it with code, so why do it with documentation? So what you can do is you can just write the bullet, write all your documentation perfectly, and then edit it every time. And that sucks because it's even more work. You have to basically revise your documentation for every release, every public change. Um, so what you could do is you could uh, not revise it every time. You could let it rot a little bit. Um, except that what happens is people get misled. They might read old documentation for new code and try the wrong thing and get frustrated. So uh, one thing you can do is you can stop documenting altogether. You can release code without uh, documentation. <laughs> because, um, you know, a lot of people do that. And this sucks, and I'm not going to tell you why. So why does writing documentation suck in general? It describes a moving target. It describes a moving target, because you release early and you release often. Uh, it's redundant. It's a description. Uh, you, tell, you use a code to describe the process to the, the computer, tell it what to do. But then you have to write documentation to describe the process to humans. So documentation is a description of a description, which is boring. Documentation is also redundant because documentation repeats, and repetition is the mind killer. For example, you might have several subclasses that all do uh, something similar with minor variations. Uh, you wind up writing the same documentation over and over. Documentation is tightly coupled to code. Either it um, describes what the code does or it's wrong and it's broken. And uh, every time you change what the code does publicly, what the user sees um, and works with, you wind up breaking your documentation. Which brings me to documentation testing, which can't be automated. Um, you can automate code and you, you, know, you test your code automatically, or at least you should. But documentation testing requires intense human effort. Someone has to read the code, someone has to read the documentation, and then correlate the two, find the problems, and uh, fix them. So what am I doing to reduce the suck? Well, the suck is mostly redundancy. So what I'm doing is I'm adding inheritance to documentation. You can um, pull in a lot of code very easily using subclassing, using roles, but you then have to document that in your public interface. You don't get the documentation from those for your own classes. So I've added an inherit um, command where you can say inherit this class's method um, documentation and name the method. And you can inherit that from anywhere, not just base classes, which is helpful for um, delegation. Oh, jeez. Oh, yes. Um, you, it uses Moose, but it doesn't have to. Um, it's automatic because it uses class mop to find out where the methods are defined, and then it pulls the documentation in. It has before and after. Uh, you can define. Uh, yeah, that's a base class. Hello, 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 subclass. Um, three lines of, of podplexus will give you these three slides worth of documentation for free. Or not for free, but from somewhere else. Uh, you can pull in actual code from your module as an example, so that when your code is tested, your uh, examples are tested automatically. When you make changes to your code, your documentation is changed automatically. There's boilerplate. You can define a paragraph and then include it everywhere. You can uh, include four docs. I'm going to talk about that. 
You can, in this templating, you can uh, define symbolic names. This is a section name, pulls it from there, it comes out in your documentation, so when you refactor and change the section name, you get it for free. Um, templates, conditional pod tables, the contents are automatically generated, and it's extensible. Um, new <laughs>